breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings y'all stand and sing with us this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that i would be set free oh jesus i sing all that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun and all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is a failing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that i would be set free oh jesus i sing for all that you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Y'all have a seat this morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Um, just a few announcements. The first one is Secret Sisters. If you're signed up um, for that, make sure you notice the table as you go out. There was some gifts on the table, so look for your name. Um, it was exciting this morning as people were coming in and seeing their name, so I hope that you're excited about that. Um, it was nice. I got a letter um, in the mail this week from my secret sister. It's just nice to know that somebody's thinking about you and praying for you. Um, the other announcement that I have, um, last week Kathy Merrill told us that we did reach our goal of $3,000 for the baby bottle campaign, but we didn't have a grand total. Um, Robin texted me last night and gave me that total. Um, $3,717.30. <laughs> How awesome is that? We've exceeded our goal, um, so that's awesome. Um, pray with me this morning. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for um, this time that we just have to come together here, Lord, and um, just to, to love on each other and catch up from our week, um, Lord, and um, just worship you um, as a congregation, as family and friends, Lord. Um, just thank you for blessing us with an amazing church, Lord. We thank you for... Um, bless in this money. Pray that you will bless this money um, that we have donated to um, the Center for Women, Lord, that you will just use it, um, multiply it, Lord. We thank you for Robin and her team. Pray that you just um, continue to bless them, that they will just be a light um, in a dark world. Um, Lord, we love you. Um, pray that you would just be with us as we continue in worship this morning, as we just dive into your word. 
Um, Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand and worship with
I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in all of you. Sing with me this one.
Today's scripture is from Matthew 21, 28 through 32. And it says, what do you think? There is a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And he answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what the father wanted? The first they answered. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Tell you what, before we get started, let's say a little prayer, okay? Dear Lord, we just ask for your presence, for your Holy Spirit to be with us right now, Lord. Speak to our hearts, our minds, Lord. Help us to know that uh, your will for us is always the best. Lord, may we seek to know your will, to follow you, to serve you, Lord. And thank you for this time together in Christ's name. Amen. So, um, part of what I want to tell you this morning is um, really being obedient to the Lord, is being a, a disciple of Christ, is uh, really seeking His will and understanding who God is and how much the Father loves us. I want to tell you a, a quick little testimony before we get started. This week was a kind of difficult week for Tara and I. And uh, we were just struggling with some, some things, and um, I just felt like there was a division between her and I. And I'll be honest with you, I was sharing my heart with uh, Chelsea and Kayla this week about that. And you know what? They were, they were helping me. We need each other. We need each other, don't we? We need people. During this time of COVID, we don't have people the way we've had people in the past, but I've been fortunate. I've been able to come to work, and I've had... Kayla and Chelsea here to, to listen to my issues and my troubles and help me along the way and, and uh, me listening to them. And together we can figure this life thing out. And uh, it, it's been really good. And then last night we had a little small group uh, meeting and, and ate a, a great meal. And you know, you're always ready to, uh, to, to, when you got a full stomach and you feel good, to just, and just talk, start talking about the Lord. So we were all together sharing about how great God was, sharing our struggles, and uh, it was just such a, an awesome time for me and Tara last night. And um, I pray that you'll find some people to connect with. Even during this time of COVID, if you don't have someone, you need someone, right? We need to be that person that people can connect with. And so uh, my testimony is I want to give praise for friends, for people that love me, that are praying for me and my family and that are, are concerned and connected. And so that's, that's my testimony to you this morning. I'll tell you what, you, you got a testimony? Anybody got a testimony they want to share with the Lord this morning before we get started in the message? Would you take just a moment? If God wants you to say something, anything at all, just give Him praise, whatever, whatever's going on in your heart and life. Anybody? Hold on just a minute, Robin. We're on, because we're online, we're going to let you say it in a microphone so they can hear you. <laughs> well, I just want to give the Lord praise this morning because when I woke up this morning, I, if I had gone, died during the night, I knew I'd be in heaven. And so when I came and got up and I knew I was coming to church today, it just thrilled me to know I'd be able to be in the house of the Lord uh, with my family, my friends, and so forth, as you said, encouragement, you know. Right. I mean, it's just wonderful. God is so wonderful. He to is. You. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. Who else? Anybody? Got a testimony for God? Miss Carol? I have a bunch of neighbors. I am, I am so blessed to have these neighbors. And my dog has a lot to do with it because he visits everyone. But one of my neighbors comes down and he's always teasing me. And he said the other day, your husband would be so proud of you, the way you keep your home, keep things up. 
And it just lifted me because sometimes your house is a burden and there's always something to be fixed. And it just right, blessed sure. me. Um, I can't say more than that. Hey, I can testify, Miss Carol keeps a nice house, a beautiful yard. And you know what? She's a beautiful person on the inside. She loves the Lord. And you've been a real witness to me through the years. Thank you, Carol. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Who, who's got a testimony for God? Whatever you've gone through. Maybe this year. Maybe you need to just say something to bring Him glory. Whatever's gone on. Anything? You know, this, this year has been really hard. And over the last couple of weeks, we've lost three really close friends. Um, not, not two to COVID, but one to cancer. And so <clears throat> it's been hard. And so you think about, you're always thinking about, well, I'm in that age group. And my time is coming soon, too. But you think, <clears throat> as you think about it, um, it's really hit home to me. You know, I'm not worthy of anything that's coming to me in the future. I am not worthy of heaven. I'm not worthy of eternal life. And the devil keeps telling you that. But then I come back and say, I'm not worthy, but Christ is. That's right. And Christ yeah. took my place. And Christ secured that for me. That's right. And so that's something to hold on to. We're not worthy, but he is. That's right. Amen. Yes, Miss Millie up here. I hope I can get this out. <laughs> Richard and I were talking about it earlier today. Um, as most of you know, my dad passed away in early January, and um, we had the two snow weeks that we didn't come to church. And Satan was really working on me um, that couple of weeks after that, and Chelsea reached out to me, and um, which was so awesome. And uh, through my granddaughter... She came in a couple of nights after that, and she said, I want you to see what a young man put on Facebook. He's here. He knows who he is. <coughs> and um, he was posting a video and said, I miss Miss Millie. I miss Miss Millie being up there and singing and worship. I went to him the next Sunday I got here. Satan was really working on me, and I'm like, I, I just... And I talked to Sherry about it, and I, I said, he can't steal my joy. My dad would um, be horrified <laughs> if he knew I had given in to that. And so I, I got here that day, and fortunately, he was here that day, and I got to love on him and tell him how important that was to me and that he was really responsible for me co getting back, coming back that day. And so um, reach out to people around you is what I'm trying to tell That's you. Right. This is so important. No matter how small you think that is, it's not small. It's not small because I was really struggling, and I'm the type that is not going to tell anybody that. <laughs> people reached out to me. And so you need to, in turn, reach out to somebody else. And I immediately went to him and wanted him to know what that meant to me. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Who else? Anybody? I want to give the God give God glory for something, whatever it's been. Anything? All right. Well, I'm glad you're here this morning. We've got a good group here, man. You guys uh, set your clock up, didn't you? And. <laughs> I, I tell you, this morning in the first service, I was struggling. I hope I do better in the second service. I, I, I don't know if it was that hour I missed of sleep or whatever, but I was just like, Lord, the words weren't coming. And um, so hopefully I'll do a little bit better, but who knows? Praise, praise the Lord. I'm just here to be used by him this morning, and uh, to him is the glory. So, you know, these testimonies are important. Because we're called not to be people who are saved. We're called to be people who are followers of Christ. People who are obedient to the Father. People who share their testimony, share their life. If you keep it all to yourself, if, if it's all about you, then that's how you're going to see life. And you're going to be a lonely person. God's called us to go and share the good news 
to be salt and light to a world out there and to really be a disciple. I was looking at this parable this week. I was thinking about Easter week. And um, this year, I was wondering how I could speak on maybe something a little different, a little bit different angle in this Easter season. And I started thinking about as Jesus was in his week of Holy Week. And the Holy Week is the time when when Jesus rode in on the donkeys into Jerusalem, on, on the donkey's colt into Jerusalem. And this is on a Sunday. And he gets to the temple. And he sees that it's late. The time is late. Jesus has come to lay his life down. This is his last week in this physical body on earth. And the temple was empty. On Monday, Jesus wakes up and he goes into Jerusalem to teach. And so this is a Monday morning of Holy Week. He's gone in to Jerusalem and he begins to teach. And as soon as he begins to teach, he faces opposition. Jesus entered the temple courts, according to Matthew 21, 23, entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things, they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me... I will tell you by what authority I'm doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, if we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say from men, we are afraid of the people for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we don't know. And Jesus said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. So they want to know an answer. Why is he there? Why is he preaching? Who does he think he is? And look what he says. He says, Hey guys, what do you think? And that's a question for us today. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, Go and work in the vineyard. I will, he answered. But later he changed his mind. Excuse me, I'm sorry. He he said, I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and he went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. And he answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? So here they are, the religious leaders, the teachers of the law. He says, what do you think? Here's the story. One said he would go, and he didn't go. One said he wouldn't go, and he went. Which one did the Father's will? It's a pretty easy question to answer, right? The first, they answered. (laughs) No brainer. Then he said to them, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness. You just said you didn't understand his testimony. John came to show you the way of righteousness. And you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. The religious leaders have been dishonest as they've led the people of Israel. They've denied the signs, the wonders that Jesus has performed among them. They've even accused him of doing it in the name of Beelzebub. They refused to recognize John's baptism. John the Baptist said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent! But all they saw as all the crowds of people were going to John into the desert to be baptized, they saw someone that's still in their power, their thunder. You see, their faith is all about them. They're the religious leaders. They're the teachers of the law. They're the ones who are to uh, 
be the go-betweens to the people and God. They're the priests, right? They're, they're the teachers. But yet it's become all about them. The son who said that he would do what the father asked is like the religious leaders. They were just pretending to please the father by going through the motions. Yet the son who said no and then did what the father asked is like the tax collectors and the prostitutes. They were disobedient to the law. They were sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes. Yet when they heard the message of repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, they were obedient to the message. Jesus condemns the religious leaders by asking them a question. Which of the two did what the Father wanted? And the religious leaders must respond to what they know is true and accept responsibility for their actions. As we look at this story, it seems pretty cut and dry. And I, I want to talk to you all for a few minutes this morning about us. Are you the obedient son or are you the disobedient son? It's interesting that I believe every father knows his children. If you're plugged in, you know your children. I believe that when the father asked the sons to go and the one said, I will, the father said, yeah, we'll see. I know you. You probably won't. And, and when he asked the other one, he said, he won't. He says, yeah, we'll see. I know you. You probably will. The problem is we're all given over to sin and we want to do what we want to do, right? It's all about us. It's our own life. We want to do what we want to do. And when people ask us to do something that we don't want to do, we might tell them we will. We might tell them we won't. But what happens in the in-between time? Is your conscience pricked? Or are you thinking about, should I be obedient to that? Is that what I should be doing? Oh, the father wasn't surprised, I'm sure, that the sons answered in the way they did and did what they did. For the father knows his sons. You see, he's raised them. He knows who's going to follow him, who loves him, and who doesn't. I guarantee you it wasn't the first time he'd asked them to do anything. The father knows the hearts of his children. As I think about my girls, I want to tell you, I know my girls. And yeah, they frustrate me. And I know which ones I can tell do something and, and they'll do it. And I know which ones I can tell to do something and I got to push and prod them. I remember growing up, my dad would tell me, time to go to school. And I'd lay there in the bed. I said, time to get up, go to school. I'd lay there in the bed. And I used to wait till he, I'd hear him say, I'm going to have to get some dynamite to go blow that kid out of the bed. I was like, time to get up, right? <laughs> Isn't that right, Dad? That's right. That's right, he did that. <laughs> but you know, inside I was going, I'm not ready to get up. I don't want to get up. I don't even know if I want to go to school this morning. I didn't know if I wanted to be obedient to the Father. But ultimately, I knew I had to get up. And if not, I was going to be in trouble. It was time to do the Father's will. Here's where we are as Christians, right? We've given in to cheap, cheap grace. And I would say it's pastor's fault. It's the church's fault. Uh, we've got up in these pulpits and, and we've made salvation so simple. God loves you. He came and he died for your sin. And all you need to do is say this little prayer and you're saved. If you say this little prayer, you got it. You're in heaven. You're, you're going. You're good. And I want to tell you that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, salvation is so much richer, 
deeper, more awesome and incredible. You know, just knowing that you're saved is one thing. But now being obedient and doing the will of the Father is the pleasure of the Son. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they're the disobedient son. They made following God all about them, all about their rules and regulations, but they themselves are not seeking God. They can't even see God in the flesh through Jesus standing in front of them. As Jesus heals and miraculous signs are done, the, the blind are seeing, the lame are walking. All they can do is complain that he did that on the Sabbath. Who does he think he is? By what authority is he teaching? Well, it's pretty plain, right? His signs point to who he is, but they can't see it. They're not willing to do the will of the Father. You see, see, they know the Father while they're children of Abraham. They're, they're children of the promise. We don't have to worry about anything else. And we Christians think that, right? I, I've said the little prayer. I'm saved. There's nothing else I need to do. I want to tell you, you're missing the boat. <laughs> you are missing the boat. There is such a deeper walk out there. Matthew 3, 1 through 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who, is, who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Come, come. The Father loves you. Repent of your sins. Humble yourself before him. Clear your conscience. Lay your sins down. Know that the Father only wants the best for you. He's got your best interest at heart. He wants the best for you. Make straight paths in your life. Correct those ways where you're, you're going off. And really seek to know Him. But when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were coming where he was baptizing people. John looked at them and said, you brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance and do not think that you can save yourselves. We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. If you say you love the Father, if you say that the Son is your Savior and you want to serve Him, but then you do nothing, look out. That ax might be at the root, ready to cut you down. That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees thought. Why, well, we're just children of the promise, children of Abraham. And John says, hey, out of these stones, God can raise up children for him. He wants those that are producing fruit. Their lives shine the Father. Their lives are a witness of the Father. Their lives are obedient to the Father, and their lives produce fruit. What about you? Does your life produce fruit? This is what I know from this story for sure. What does the Father expect from us? He expects obedience. The Father expects obedience. And in turn, I promise you, He pours out all the blessing when you're obedient to the Father. For He loves you. The Father just doesn't want obedience to Him. He wants obedience in every area of your life. He wants you to be obedient to everybody you run into in the highways and byways, to, to love them, to be a witness to them. When you're in public, how do you treat others? Are you kind? Do you say thank you, please? 
Are you a pleasant person? Or do you only have your own agendas? How about at work? How do you treat your coworkers? Do you think about them? Are you concerned about them? Do you pray for them? Do you tell them about your faith? Growing up, I longed to have a true friend. Especially when we're teenagers, we're always backbiting. At least we were when I was growing up. I'm sure you still are, right? And to have a true friend, I thought, at 16 years old would have meant everything. I tell you, young people, you can be that true friend. You can be the person that the other person can count on. You can, you can keep things in confidence. You can help lead and guide them. You can show them the way to the Lord. You can bring goodness into their heart and life. As you're obedient to the Father, He'll work in and through you to do great things for others. It's been such a pleasure having my mom and dad at the house since January. I was a little bit worried. <laughs> they were too. <laughs> but you know what I've seen that's so cool? They've been there. And because we were obedient to the Father, and they brought in mom and dad, God brought in mom and dad, I want to serve them. My heart is to serve them. And you know what I've noticed? Their heart has been to serve us too. So both of us, both families are in this house with this attitude that we want to serve each other. And so yesterday I, I thought it was funny. My mom bought some, I don't know, was it uh, Mayfield or Briar's ice cream? Which kind was it? All right, she, she bought some ice cream and I put it in her freezer. And on Friday night, I was thinking about that ice cream. <laughs> I went to my freezer and I didn't have any ice cream. I thought, hmm, downstairs, there's some ice cream. <laughs> well, they had already gone to bed, so I said, oh, I'm going to go down there. And I got it out. It hadn't even been open. I was like, oh, you know, they're, they're going to notice. <laughs> so I opened it up and... I got some, I was like, oh, that, that looks too good. I had to get me a good bowl, right? And, and I closed it back up and put it in their freezer. So yesterday, I'm downstairs. I said, I got a confession. And they said, what's that? I said, you know that half gallon of ice cream you bought on Friday? And she said, yeah. I said, I had to get into it last night. So I just got to thinking about ice cream. You know what my mom says? Everything we have is yours. You don't worry about that at all. Anything that we have in this room, it's all yours. You can have whatever you want, any of you, anytime. I'm like, oh, it's on now, right? <laughs> but, 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 but we feel the same way. What's that? My bill just went up for groceries. Yeah. <laughs> but we feel the same way. You know, we want them to have anything we have. And we want to serve them, and they want to serve us. And that's how we ought to feel in our community. That's how we ought to feel with our friends. That's how we ought to feel with the people out there in the highways and byways. You know what? It's how we need to feel with our spouses. I told you a minute ago, I had kind of a rough week with Tara this week. Is Tara in here? I didn't see her back there. Where are you? Oh, she's sitting back. Uh, we, we had a rough week. The problem was, it was me. I was frustrated that she was down and out. I was frustrated that she wasn't getting through the things she was struggling with, and I needed to repent. I needed to serve her. But I was too self-centered, too concerned about myself to humble myself. And as I, I talked with friends that helped me, as we had a dinner last night, I was, I, I was much more able this week to go through the week to pray for her, to pray with her, 
to help her through this, to understand her better. And I, are we in a good place now? I think we're in a good place now, right? We got to be ready to be used by God all the time, right? Oh, we might say, no, I don't want to go do that. I'm not going to that field. It's hot out there. I'm tired. There's plenty of workers out there. Why do I need to go? But then we need to rethink it. That's what the Father wants. Do I want to serve me or do I want to serve the Father? I tell you, it's so much better when we serve the Father. The Father expects us to be obedient to Him. You know, that's being a disciple. That's, that's having a deeper faith. Psalm 139, David got it right. Verses 23 through 24, he says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Can you pray that? That's hard to pray sometimes, right? Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. If you want to be able to do the will of the Father, you got to get you out of the way. You got to be able to be humble. You got to be able to come and repent of your sins to make straight those paths in your lives. You got to be able to put down those things that take away, take you away from God. Maybe it's your cell phone, maybe it's your computer. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's TV, whatever it is. You got to be able to put these things away that steal your attention. And you got to be willing to know the will of the Father by seeking Him, by reading His Word, by praying, by building a relationship with Him so that you can be obedient to the Father. And it starts right here. Search me, God, know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts, Lord. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I tell you, when you can pray that prayer and mean it, God will lift you up, restore you, heal you, and you're ready to be used. I can tell you this. Jesus said... In John 10, 10, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. In your walk with the Lord, do you want to just settle for salvation? Maybe you do. And maybe you want to live your life wondering, am I saved? Am I not saved? Do I need to say that prayer again? Does God really love me? Have my sins really been forgiven? Maybe you want to live right there in that place in your life. Always wondering. Always not sure. But Jesus says, I've come so you can have life, everlasting life, and I want to give it to you abundantly in ways you never dreamed of. When the whole world's falling apart all around you, when people are dying from COVID and there's a pandemic, when politics are just crazy and out of whack, when you don't know where that next paycheck is coming from to pay your bills, you go, wow, God is good. Come on now, death itself's been defeated. Death has been defeated. What are you afraid of? If you really believe it, what are you afraid of? Something that wonderful deserves doing the will of the Father. Being obedient to the Father. Being a disciple, a learner, a follower, one who accepts instructions. This morning, anything less than that in your life, it's opposition to the Father. And opposing the Father 
opposes Jesus too. Look out. Let's stand this morning and pray. Lord Jesus, often life comes in with its struggles, but things change when I seek you. Things change when I long to do the will of the Father. Things change when I say, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Lord, would you help me to be teachable and hum humble? Would you help me to repent of my sins? And, and would you lead me in the way of everlasting, Lord? You've already paved the path. You've done it all if we just trust you. Lord, may we seek to know you better each day so that we can understand the will of the Father. And Lord, may we be people that don't struggle with our faith. May we know that we know that we know that the Father loves us and he's called us to go into the vineyards and work. Lord, we give you praise and honor in Christ's name. Amen.